So, have you ever been at a store? You finish shopping, you have everything you need and you want in your shopping cart or your basket, and you're heading towards the line to check out. But as you approach that line, you see it extending further than you had imagined, and it might take easily a half hour to get through that line. And you stop and think, do I really need these items in my basket? Am I really willing to wait in that line? Well, then you look down at what you have in your basket and your cart and you decide, you know what? What I have is important, so I'm willing to wait. Have you ever felt like you're waiting in line on God? That you have things and you are probably thinking of something right now that you are waiting on. Maybe it is a prayer request. Maybe it's a promise that God has given you or a desire in your heart. And you've been waiting on this. Maybe for a few months, maybe for a few years. I'd like to share a few biblical characters that we know so well who also experienced times of waiting. But as we know their stories, God had a purpose for their waiting and he showed and revealed something absolutely beautiful and powerful when they waited. The first example is of course the story of Joseph. What happens when he was young? God gave him dreams. He gave him a promise of something that would happen in the future. And how long between when he was given those dreams and between when it happened? Years. And what happened in the meantime? It wasn't an easy road, but Joseph waited and he knew the promise God had given him. Another example is a story of David He's an amazing example of waiting. God gave him the prophecy that you would become king of Israel. And yet, what did he experience between that time as a young man being prophesied over by the prophet Samuel and the oil being poured over his head, anointing him as king of Israel between him actually sitting on the throne of Israel? Again, years. And in the meantime, trials. King Saul tried to kill him so many times. He fought in many battles. It was not an easy time of waiting, but yet he knew the promise God had given him and he waited. Another example we see is Hannah in the Bible. She had the desire, the fervent desire to have a child because she had not had any children yet. But we see in the scripture, what did she do? She went to the temple to pray, to pour out her heart to the Father. And we even see Eli, he made note that she was so fervent in her prayer, and so passionate in her pleas to God that even there was no sound coming out, but just her lips moving and he thought she might have been drunk, but she was pouring out her heart to the Father. She had this desire and she had waited. And then God heard her cries and he gave her a child, but there was waiting involved. And of course the child that God gave her, we had earlier, then anointed David as king, the prophet Samuel. So God had an amazing calling on that child that he gave to Hannah. Another example we see even is, even Yeshua, when he was about 12, he went to the temple and he spoke very, you know, using wise words and he spoke and discussed with those who were even leaders, the priests there in the temple. But yet it wasn't quite his time to go public in ministry. There was still a time of preparing and of waiting. And it was only when he reached age 30 that he began his ministry. So even Yeshua began his ministry with waiting. Another example is the disciples. When Yeshua told them to wait in Jerusalem in Acts 1, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait there for the gift that I will give you. And while they were gathered together, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift the Father promised, which you have heard me discuss, Acts 1.4. This was the promise of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, this gift of God. But they had, again, to wait. Why did they have to wait? You know, it's interesting. If you go back to the Greek, the strong um, definition of this word, wait, that Yeshua used in Acts 1, it's the Greek word perimeno, which means to remain steadfast, regardless of the obstacles involved, to endure putting up with surrounding difficulty. 
You know, it's, it's often what we do while we wait will affect that which we're waiting for. Take the examples of those from the Bible that I just spoke of a moment ago. Joseph, David, Hannah, Yeshua, the disciples. What were they doing as they waited? Were they facing trials, difficulties? Yes, but what did they do? Joseph, did he reject God and say that, you know, you've, here I am a slave, you've forgotten me, and then turn his back on God? No. Even though through the hardship, what does the scripture say? Everything Joseph did prospered because God was with him, because he remained steadfast in his waiting on God's promises. What about David? God remained with him. And what do we see? They look at the book of Psalms as the most beautiful example of what David did in his time of waiting. He wrote music to the Lord. He prayed to the Father. He was an intimate relationship. He had an intimate relationship with God. And that did not waver even though he had to wait and even though he had to run away from a man who was trying to kill him, King Saul, because of the jealousy and because of um, the evil that was in King Saul's heart because King Saul had rejected the Lord. Yeshua had to wait. But even in all these examples, Hannah, Yeshua, David, Joseph, the disciples, what do we find them doing? We find them praying. We find them fervent in the will, walking in the will of the Father, being faithful and steadfast. We see them preparing and making themselves ready for what is about to happen. Making themselves ready for the promise. Like I said, it is what you do while you wait that will affect what you are waiting for. For example, where were the disciples? Acts 1, Yeshua said, he commanded them, go to Jerusalem, do not leave it. So where do we find the disciples in Acts 2? Do we find them sitting back at home on their couch watching Netflix and binge watching, having the time of their lives? I mean, they're waiting, right? That's in our Western culture. We have the idea of waiting as it's passive. I'm going to wait. For the action to happen. In the meantime, well, there's no action happening because I'm waiting. I'm not doing anything. I'm waiting. But that is not the waiting Yeshua spoke of. Rather, his waiting that he spoke of, that perimeno, that Greek word perimeno, is to remain steadfast in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of obstacles. And how do we remain steadfast on the promises of God? What do we see the disciples doing? So like I said, where do we find them? We find them obeying his command. That is absolutely paramount and key. How do we receive the gift of the Father and the gifts and the promises? We must obey his commands. We must hear and obey, Shema, hear and obey. If they had not been in Jerusalem, things would have looked a little bit differently. But Yeshua said, be in Jerusalem and do not depart. And we find them obeying that command. They went to Jerusalem and they stayed there. So we find them walking in obedience to the word of God. And then what were they doing when they were in Jerusalem? Hanging out with friends and just having the time of their life and exploring the sights and... What were they doing? They were focused. They knew why they were there. They were ready and waiting and prepared. They were where they were supposed to be and they were doing what they were called to do. They were waiting in prayer, in worship, and in fellowship with their brethren in Messiah. And in that way, when the Holy Spirit fell, as the scripture says, as tongues of fire that lit upon them, they were ready, and they were ready to receive the gift that God had promised them. You know, often waiting is not the easiest thing. I mean, I can speak from my own personal experience. We don't want to wait. We want, we have a fast food culture where we want it now. You know, we, we place that order. We're expecting it to come in a few minutes. Um, that delivery of that pizza, right? Or that, that, that order of, from Amazon. Or We want it to come right away. We're not ready to wait. We don't have that patience, that fruit of the Spirit, as much as we should in many instances. You know, if we're praying for a mate or a spouse or that new job or whatever that is, we're waiting for it to happen really soon because, you know, I pray I did my part of the deal. Hey God, where are you? You know what? You need to hold up your end of the deal by giving the gift according to my time. But is that what we see in scripture? No. It's according to God's time because that is the best time. And yet it might take years. It might take a few days. Like in the disciples' case. They didn't have to wait long, but they did have to wait. But Joseph, David, Hannah, 
they had to wait longer. But the gift that was given to them absolutely changed the lives of so many around them. Look at Joseph, his life and the calling that he was called to in the dreams that were given to him. He was able to save lives throughout Egypt and the surrounding lands. Look at David, he ruled as the king of Israel and he is remembered as one of the best kings of Israel with a heart, a man after God's own heart. What about the son that was given to Hannah? Who became the prophet who anointed King David. So what does it mean to wait on the Lord in prayer? What does it mean to wait on God? Like I said earlier, our Western culture has painted waiting as a passive thing that we do. But I'd like to tell you that waiting is not passive. As Yeshua said in Acts 1, waiting is not passive. Waiting is active. You remain steadfast in the midst of difficulty because waiting is not easy. And I think we all know that. It will look different for each thing that we might be waiting for. But we are to remain active in waiting, which means we're not waiting for something to happen and to fall into our laps. We are preparing ourselves. We are making ourselves ready so that when that thing comes that God will give us, we are ready for that. We are in Jerusalem when we need to be in Jerusalem. We are in prayer and worship when we need to be in prayer and worship. For example, if I was hoping and praying to God for a spouse or, you know, something like that, but I was doing my own thing and spending my time frivolously and, and maybe, you know, being a selfie model with the focus of exalting myself and putting my time on things that weren't important for the kingdom, hobbies or, or any kind of a, a thing that would distract me from the greater work. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the things that, you know, God has given around us and um, relaxing, but when our time, when our attention is devoted to that alone, to ourselves and that gratification, to, to seeking pleasures, to, to, to distracting ourselves with the things of this world in any form or fashion, no matter how small or how large, we distract ourselves and we take ourselves away from the greater gift and the greater beautiful calling that God has called us to. Because God has called you, brothers and sisters, to something beautiful and he has given you a beautiful calling, a powerful calling, like Joseph, like David, like Samuel, to impact the world for his kingdom, to touch lives. So as you're waiting for something, be busy about the father's business like Yeshua was. He was busy about his father's business even though he was still waiting to begin his public ministry. He didn't wait to get started to start. You know, when we pray to the Father, when we're, we're praying, we're in prayer, are we only speaking or are we listening? Is prayer monologue or is prayer dialogue? It's when we're speaking, we're pouring out our heart to God and we're, we're thanking Him for everything He's given us and we're, we're coming to before His throne to praise and to honor Him and making our requests known to Him. That is good. But are we only speaking or are we also listening to our King? If we come before his throne just to talk and then we're done, we just walk out of his throne room. I mean, no, is that how we, were, what we would do if we went before an actual king or an actual ruler? We would speak, but then we would listen. Prayer is dialogue, not a monologue. And that is when God will speak to us to guide our steps and to reveal things that we would not have known before in regards to what is on our heart, a desire or an interest or what we might be waiting on. It is when we're listening to the Father's voice in prayer and we spend those times with Him, that, that time of intimacy, that we will hear His voice and we will be so familiar with His voice that we will recognize it when He says, go, stop, turn right, turn left, pursue this open door, don't pursue that door. I'm closing this door and opening up a new one. Or when He guides us to a person to speak to them, to speak words of life or encouragement, or when he guides us in a different direction because we have, we have pursued that intimate relationship with him. Because when we're waiting, oftentimes we're waiting for something to happen and to be given to us, but we have forgotten to, to pursue that relationship with the gift giver. He who gives all things that are beautiful. He who has given us life. We cannot forget that. He is the one who supplies our needs. And sometimes, that looks different than what our wants are. But He will supply our needs because He knows our heart's desires. If we wait on Him, actively wait, that steadfast wait in the midst of trials, 
Harry Menno on him in prayer and worship, in an active walking as Yeshua walked, loving others as Yeshua loves us, and loving the Father with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, being a light to the world and the salt of the earth that has not lost its flavor, not being so influenced by the world and the distractions of the world as we wait and as we pursue that relationship with Him, that all of a sudden our attention is on us, our attention is on our, our, our aspirations and um, going further, but in the end, it's, it's us. Rather, when we wait upon the Lord, we want His will to be done. We want to use the gift that He gives and every gift that He gives, no matter how small, for His glory and for His honor and for His praise, to make His name known throughout the earth. That not just, God, I want to get married so I can, I can feel fulfilled, I can, I can feel loved, but no, God, I desire this because I want to honor you even more in this relationship, in this marriage, Father. I want to go even further for the kingdom with a spouse, Father, because it's all about you. Or Father, I desire this new job or, or this, whatever comes to your mind that you know you're waiting on because I want to glorify you in it. And when we have that as our goal, that is when God blesses us because it's no longer about us, it's about Him. And if it's for His glory, He'll bring it to pass. If it's for the loving of our neighbor as ourselves, it is, if it is for showing Yeshua and what He looks like to those around us, that's when He blesses us. And that's why Yeshua called the disciples to wait in Jerusalem, to wait for the gift because that gift would impact the world, would bring and start that, that launch, that restoration process. As Yeshua spoke about this, the festival of Sukkot, that rivers of living water would flow forth. And just like the Holy Spirit, we are to be a vessel that is just overflowing with the power, with the love of the Holy Spirit that will go out and impact those around us. We don't keep it for ourselves. We don't hide that light under a bushel. But that we are active in our faith. And we're active in our waiting, no matter what we might be waiting on in our lives. Living a life that honors Him because we want to use everything He has given us now and that for which we are waiting to glorify His name. That's when He blesses us, even beyond what we could have imagined, though it might look different than what we imagined. So brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you now, if you're waiting on something, trust in God, trust in the Father. Don't trust in your own strength. Like it says in Proverbs 3, 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. To know His voice so that you will hear Him when He directs your paths, and He will guide you to where you're meant to be, so that you can obey and walk in that obedience as the disciples did, so you may receive the gift that He wants to give you. Yeshua said He, gave, he came to give us life and life abundantly, but we are called to walk in life to walk in the freedom that He has given us through His sacrifice and through His resurrection. To not walk in bondage as we used to before we knew our Messiah, but to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and to walk in obedience to His word. Because that is what Yeshua meant when He said, I have called worshipers to worship me in spirit and truth. Those are so important and they must be walked out together in that way that we can impact and we can be a light to the world around us. So that even if we are waiting, we're not waiting as our culture would define waiting, but we are being active. Because it is when we are active that the Father begins to work. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, today, first to honor you, to extol you, to praise you for who you are, for all you have given us, for every good gift that you have given us, Father. Father, there are those of us who are waiting on things that you have put a desire in our hearts, Father, for something. And many of us have been waiting for a very long time, but Father, in the midst of our waiting, we ask for your strength, Father, that we will continue to wait on you. Father, because you are a good Father, you are a faithful Father, to strengthen us that in the midst of obstacles, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of doubt even, Father, that we will keep our focus on you, we will keep our eyes on you, Father. Father, be with each one of us today that we will love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, God. And that everything you have given us and everything that you will continue to pour out upon us, Father, we will use for your kingdom, God. 
Father, we love you. We honor you. We pray all this in the name of Yeshua. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you are blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he make his face to shine upon you. Blessings and shalom.